within the next 10 or 20 years? I, I, I don't understand why. I think we need to, 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 uh, to recommend denial until we can look at the sewer problems in Baldock and hey, Howard, uh, if, what's the use in doing this if, we're, if it's not going to be done anything done with it unless there's something coming down? Uh, as far as the comments that were made, my house, I live in a very small house, it's about 16, 1700 square feet. I, it's not that I don't want small homes, I want the growth in Lowndes County to go right. We've got areas in Lowndes County now that people, farmers are being told they can't spray their pecan trees because the houses were built next to them. These areas, this pecan grows been there for 15 years, or 50 years. So what's going to happen here? Uh, they're going to be spraying these fields with chemicals. They, they say they're safe. So, but you know we can't believe everything. But uh, as I just I just think we're being premature. And we've got too many things that need to be looked at. The infrastructure. Uh, he was speaking of the, the broadband. The user will pay for broadband. It's like cable TV. Uh, incorporate a building a new subdivision does not increase the tax base. Houses actually cost the city money with their infrastructure. So that's all I have to say. Uh, I, I, no, I have you're still going to pay conservation use. So the taxes that are coming in to the city of Hay Hire is not the only thing they would get is basically what they get right now, whatever they normally would get. It's, not, it's going to be in conservation use. So you're limited. It's a specific amount that's charged. So I agree with Jody. I think we, you know, I think we need to seriously consider, even, even the applicant said that uh, there's no plans for development for years not knowing in the next 10 to 20 years uh, what zoning is going to change or what's going to happen during that period of time. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainties here. There's, there's been no, uh, he's not required to do so, but, but we don't have any uh, proposed layout for a plan for a subdivision or anything. The county's still having some issues for, with the, the roads that they're to get resolved over there, which left up to them, but I think we're a little premature on that kind of stuff. I would just like to comment that um, one of the comments Mr. Nelson mentioned, an observation he made, which is that R15 or then are compatible, which is maybe true. However, my concern is you requested or proposed R10 next to the agricultural and forest area. If you look at the property, two-thirds of the perimeter is actually adjacent to EA land. Also, when you look at the city of Pehira, it looks like it's surrounded by a green belt. So clearly, even within the, in the future land use, there, are, there is plans to preserve that green belt around the city. What this development is doing is sort of sprawling into that agricultural area. Um, and with, so without seeing a plan of development, how the edge, specifically the edges along the EA, um, current EA area, which is also the future of that the properties, it's very hard to, to make a, a smart decision for such a request. Um, I mean, there are things like traffic congestion that, that come to mind with an R15 or an R10 zoning that's being requested, there's going to be at least 115 to 175 lots that are going to be part of this, subdivided on this property. So we are talking about 175 residences, possibly, all using that front street 122 for ingress and, uh, ingress and egress. So I, it would have been very useful for us if there was a true development plan to help us see how, what is being proposed. 
But as you were saying, there may be not any development, maybe in 10 or 20 years. You also mentioned that um, this might be eventually a planned development. And I sort of wish that's what you had presented, a planned development that actually addresses all these edges, addresses all the different the unique situations to this um, property. So it seems to me that there's a lot of unknown, unknowns, and I'm, I'm only, I can only assume the worst case scenario for this property the way it's been already presented to us as far as the zoning. Um, so I think I'm mirroring what has been already said. That's all I have to say. All right, any other discussion amongst the commissioners? If not, I will now entertain a motion from the commissioner. Sure. I'd like to make a motion to call on all the circumstances that we've recently just discussed. And if, uh, I feel like that we're way premature on this. A lot of issues with the city have been hired and needs to be developed. The applicant itself, himself saying there's no plans for development and not knowing what's going to transpire. 10, 20 years, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend it now. Uh, we have a motion. Go ahead, Jim. Yes, Mr. Chairman, there's two requests before you. Uh, for rezoning and an annexation. The rezoning only needs to be acted on first. Um, the annexation is later. And we had some discussion on this at the work session, too. I think the benefit is the annexation question is completely separate, but I think the rezoning question can be approached from the standpoint that if the property is annexed, what zoning should it have? I think that would be a better benefit to the Ohio City Council in terms of the first vote. And the second vote would be the annex or not as a recommendation. So we're dealing with the rezoning? Rezoning needs to go first. Okay. I'll make a motion on I'll, I'll change my motion that's already existing to reflect rezoning and on an annexation so that one needs to be done initially. Or denial. Denial. I think we have to separate. We are separating. That's all. That's all. But the one concern is EA zoning does not exist in Hayhara. It would need to be a Hayhara category. If there is no zoning, rezoning approved, it defaults to an R15, which is the most restrictive in Hayhara. So it's a catch 22 then? I, I think to separate the decisions, if you're wanting to make a motion to recommend against the annexation, I think that's best served in the second vote. And the first one would be if it's annexed, here's the zoning that would be appropriate. Okay. So you can't make a motion to deny the annex, I mean, yeah. deny the uh, rezoning request. In normal circumstances, you can. I think with an annexation request, it's somewhat awkward because it would say that the rezoning should stay as is. And EA zoning is not an option in the city limits. <laughs> Well, the state law doesn't let you do it that way. I wish it did. So we, what we need to do is have two votes. One we on, one we need, on need to make a motion on the zoning, either R10 or R15. It's going to default to R15 if there's no motion made on it. So somebody needs to make a motion to move it one way or the other. Could I just, just a clarification, is the, the closest to state agricultural type zoning is R15, is that the... Right. The default is the most restrictive zoning the city has to offer, which is R15. There is no agricultural zoning of any kind mm -hmm. in Hayhara. But that would be the, the closest to... Correct, the most restrictive. Mm -hmm. So do, we, do I need to make a motion here to recommend R15 zoning for this property? And then another a request for a vote. Is that the easiest way to do it? Mm -hmm. Right, I think we've got the beginning of a motion already put forward. So, Tommy, do you want to start so a motion? Not leave, I just want clarification. No, I want to 
clarification. Sure. So we cannot, when you're forcing, if the law is forcing us to make a, a motion or a decision on the zone, and even though it's EA now, the state's forcing us to change it before we make a motion right. on the annexation. The state is forcing the city to decide on the zoning action first and then decide on annexation. So for example, if you, this being the city, if they approve a rezoning to such and such, to R15 or RP, and then in the next vote, deny the annexation, then the annexation is simply denied. Okay. There is no zoning change. Okay. Uh, it's the second vote is the critical. Okay, I'll make a motion if we go to the, uh, as, as staff recommends on the rezone, which is RP. All right, we have a motion on the floor. We need a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second um, to approve staff's recommendation. Are there any discussions on this motion? There being none, all in favor of this re request, please do so by raising your right hand. All opposed? The motion passes five to one. We also need a, a motion and a second on agenda item number three, A 2014-04 on the annexation. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Will. Uh, I make a motion as uh, initially it indicated to begin with on the annexation that we deny annexation because I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and the developer said himself it's going to be 15 or 20 years and a lot of uh, rezoning to change. It's not going to increase the tax base to any higher if that was the issue for doing it. And I'll uh, make a motion to recommend it now. We have a motion and a second for a denial of agenda item number three. Is there any discussion on this motion? Being none, all those in favor of denying this request, please do so by raising your right hand. All those opposed have the same right. The motion passes five to one. All right, please remember.